already making my plans as to what I'm going to be doing to keep my hands warm today. It's minus five in sunny Banff here right now, and I need to try and figure out what it is I'm going to use for today. I've got choices of the liquid fuel hand warmers, the electronic hand warmers, and the heated gloves. Here we have the two different styles of hand warmer. Over here we have a liquid fuel hand warmer. The fuel for that is naphtha, commonly referred to as lighter fluid. That's a 15 mil bottle. It'll run that nominally for anywhere from 9 to 12 hours at around 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Over here we have electronic hand warmer and uh, this one will run on these two 18650 cells for about an hour and a half at the equivalent temperature of around 135 Fahrenheit, which is the highest setting you can get for these. The highest setting you can get for these, depending on how much catalyst you pack into the head, could be as high as 165. But we want to compare apples to apples for the purposes of this demonstration. Moving on then, let's look at some of the weight liabilities of these two different systems. Here you've got a bottle of fuel that weighs about 15 grams and we've got the liquid fuel hand warmer that weighs about 108 grams. Here we've got two 18650 batteries and the nominal capacity uh, that we would assume for these hand warmers I usually go for at least uh, 3000 milliamp hours and because these I believe are in parallel I think we're looking at a voltage of here the nominal voltage is 3.6 volts. These weigh 94 grams and the hand warmer weighs 140 grams. Now let's talk then about your intended use you can see that if you're going out for an entire day, say you're heading to the ski hill for some downhill skiing or you're going on a cross country trail and so on, you're probably going to want somewhere like eight hours of uh, ability to warm your hands. With this guy, you're looking at about an hour and a half at the equivalent temperature from these two cells. So you probably would find that this would be more convenient for going out to walk your dog because you're going to need to either engineer this thing so you can open it up and replace the cells which isn't easy or carry a few of these different hand warmers and in order to get through an eight hour day, you're gonna need something like five of them, which is going to significantly increase your weight burden to, uh, you're probably carrying around, uh, what, 250 grams about for each one. And so you're gonna be carrying over a kilo or, or perhaps about three pounds in your pocket in order to get full, through a full day for one of these. That would mean then if you've got one in each pocket you're going to be carrying six pounds of weight whereas with this you're going to be carrying 250 grams in total 125 grams in each pocket. So next what we're going to do then if uh, you want to stick around for the science behind this we'll look at why this is because it boils down to the energy density between the different fuel types this being uh, naphtha we'll look at what kind of energy this stores as opposed to how much energy can be released by these 18650 lithium ion cobalt cells these notes are going to be uh, linked below if you want to refer to the original source for these. Uh, to start with, I want to establish that 
naphtha, the difference in energy density between conventional gasoline, which is here, and petroleum naphtha, which is here, results in about 3%. So for the purposes of this discussion, because the U.S. Department of Energy has published figures that looks at the differences between uh, electricity and gasoline, we're going to use gasoline for the comparison and we will just bear in mind that you're going to get 3% better efficiency from the naphtha that you use in your hand warmer. So here's the chart from the U.S. Department of Energy and what they've done here is we're going to skip to just a couple of boxes for convenience. The energy comparison box here, gasoline, they say one gallon of, of gasoline has 100% of the energy and one GGE and uh, GGE is gasoline equivalent. It's 100% uh, when you combine gasoline and ethanol. So now we go over here and uh, I hope that you can see this. If not, refer to the chart in the link. A typical battery has about 15.3% of the energy in one GGE. So that would mean then that we're going to need something like 6.6 .6 times the energy provided by an electrical source as we would for the equivalent amount of naphtha. Now you'll recall that these two batteries will give you about one and a half hours and that's about a half of an amp hour. So to get through the day you're going to need about this many batteries. I'm not sure if you can read this scale display or not, so I'll do that for you. We're looking at 1.320 kilos or 1320 grams for this battery pack here, which is going to give us 5 amp hours of storage. About the same amount of heat that we can get from that battery pack would be contained in this. The bottle weighs uh, 6 grams, so the fuel that's contained within it would be the equivalent of 12 grams of fuel, which I believe is about 15 milliliters. So, what about those heated work gloves, you might ask? Well, these as you buy them stock are pretty much useless. The battery packs that come with them don't generate enough heat to keep your fingers warm on a typical Canadian winter's day. So what I had to do, and you can see the details on this in more detail in a previous video I made, I had to make my own battery pack. And that involved then putting three of these same 18650 cells that you see here into series to get high enough voltage to run these so that they got warm enough and these have three settings the green being the lowest the red being the highest and once again you're gonna get the highest setting um, which is probably something you'd need around minus 20 for maybe the equivalent hour and a half and on the green setting which would be something like we're talking centigrade now um, anywhere from say 0 to minus 8 uh, you're gonna get maybe about three hours from that so once again if you wanted to use these gloves all day long you wouldn't get through the full day with those unless you were able to carry some extra battery packs and swap those in and out and these are just barely able to fit in that pocket as you can see they're a pretty tight fit and they're a bit of a pain in the butt to uh, get in and out and that's why I've put the charger port 
so that it kind of sticks out the side there and I can plug directly in to charge them. So what's the conclusion? Well, and by the way, I should also mention that when you buy these electronic hand warmers stock, you don't get near the amount of milliamp capacity that you could get from an optimized battery. So for this pack, there is also a previous video showing where I installed much higher capacity 21700 cells into this particular one, whereas um, this one, for example, it's not fat enough to take a 21700, so these are 18650s. Anyway, the maximum heat you're still going to get this guy up to is about 135 Fahrenheit. And the weight of that, as opposed to the weight of this, is quite a bit more. So if you want a good heat monster for the whole day, something like this Johnny e. Giant is the way to go because you can actually optimize the catalyst head in there by putting enough catalyst in that you can get 165 degrees Fahrenheit out of this monster. So the conclusion for the long-winded guy that has given you all this would be that for weight you can't beat the energy density of liquid fuel and that'll always be the case when you're using an electronic source you're going to get about 15 percent of the capacity of the equivalent amount of liquid fuel